If you keep up with the drill music scene or watch my channel, it's no surprise that there's an endless stream of killers coming from Chicago. But there are some killers whose crimes are so heinous that they stand out above the rest. It's one thing to kill another rival gang member who signed up for that lifestyle and might be a killer as well, but the subjects of today's video took things to a whole other level. The subjects of today's video did things so vile that anyone who believes in God will come away from watching this video thinking the subjects were under the control of the devil. In this video, we'll be discussing the most evil men in Chirac. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. The tragic story of young QC starts off with his rough upbringing. Born Kwamani Wilson, he was raised by his mother Yolanda Holmes. It's rumored that he was spoiled as a child and he would lash out whenever he wouldn't get his way. His father, Jeffrey Wilson, is serving a life sentence in prison for murder after setting fire to a home in 1990. His father was a reputed gang leader from the west side of Chicago and charged with murder and aggravated arson in 1993 after burning down a crack house and killing two people in the process. Sadly, young QC would follow in his father's footsteps and become active in the streets. As he became active in the streets, he began to pursue a rap career and decided to go by the name Young QC. Once he started rapping, he began to look for different ways to fund his rap career, and one day, he came up with an unthinkable plan. On September 12, 2012, young QC's mother Yolanda Holmes was shot and stabbed to death as she slept in her apartment. Following her death, the police were left looking for answers. While his mom's death was being investigated, young QC was balling and living a lavish lifestyle. He cleared out his mother's bank account and was seen posting cash on social media. He fully customized the Mustang his mother bought him and was throwing thousands of dollars in cash in the streets. He also cashed out on her $90,000 inheritance. Since young QC wasn't behaving in the manner expected of someone that just lost a loved one, the police became suspicious of him. They then decided to do a full-blown investigation into Young QC and all of his associates. Young QC tried to cover up his tracks by showing up to the funeral of a teenager killed in the city and by doing a TV interview about his mother. However, it all proved futile as the police were already on his case. One day, one of Young QC's associates named Eugene Spencer was brought in for questioning by the police. Once in the interrogation room, the police put the full court press on him and he ended up folding. It was at this moment that young QC's heinous plot was revealed. It turns out that young QC had hired Eugene Spencer to kill his mother on that tragic night of September 12th. The hitman, Spencer, told investigators that young QC ordered him to kill her and offered $3,500 for the job. In the early morning hours of September 12, 2012, Spencer broke into Holmes' apartment on the north side only to find her sleeping alongside her boyfriend, Curtis Wyatt. Spencer fatally shot and stabbed Holmes. Afterwards, young QC called him and told him to make sure that the bitch is dead. Shortly after, Yolanda Holmes' boyfriend, Wyatt, fought him out of the apartment. Wyatt would later identify Spencer as the gunman. At the time of his arrest, authorities said young QC admitted to police that he plotted against his mom for financial gain, but claimed he never intended for her to die. It was supposed to be a robbery, he told detectives. Spencer said young QC ultimately paid him just $70. His mother's life was valued at just $70 to him. Young QC was the sole beneficiary of his mother's life insurance policies, so he inherited more than $90,000. As soon as he received the money, he started blowing it on useless items and flexing it on social media. During his trial in 2019, prosecutors played the video of him literally throwing away his mother's money after he made the withdrawal from the bank and another video of him flexing in a mirror, wearing a gold chain and fanning $100 bills. The jury deliberated for just two hours before they convicted him. Young QC was sentenced to 99 years in prison and the hitman, Eugene Spencer, was sentenced to 100 years in prison. Till this day, young QC has shown no remorse for his mother's death, and he was emotionless as he was being sentenced. Once someone has done something difficult before, 
it becomes easier and easier to do it again. A lot of the infamous Chicago gangsters are known for killing their rival gang members who are oftentimes killers as well. You would think that the killing would be limited to rival gang members who signed up for the street life, but once you've already killed someone before and it no longer bothers you, what's stopping you from killing someone that angers you in your personal life? The worst thing the average person would do when angry is throw a punch. But when someone has already broken the threshold of murder, there's no telling what they might do in the heat of the moment when someone angers them. The next subject of today's video allegedly committed a heinous crime after losing control of his anger following an argument. On November 3rd, 2016, a member of the famous Chicago gang called 600 named Bite Down, real name Daryl Benton Harris, was visiting his baby mother named Amani House in her home in the 8,000 block of South Shore Drive sometime after midnight. Bite Down was 19 at the time and Imani was 20. They already had a five month old child together and Imani was four months pregnant with their second child. Imani lived with her five month old daughter, her mother, and her four younger siblings. According to a family friend, Imani's entire family disliked Bite Down because of the way he treated her. On that day, Imani's younger brother, 16 year old Elijah Harris, got into an argument with Bite Down that soon escalated into a physical fight. Following the fight, Bite Down left the home and returned a short while later with a gun. That's when he gunned down Elijah in front of the boy's 42 year old mother. As the mother tried to run away, Bite Down fired multiple shots, striking the woman in her back. She collapsed on the ground, and Bite Down then proceeded to shoot Imani, killing her and his own unborn child in the process. By that point, the 42 year old mother had begun crawling away despite her injuries. Bite Down then allegedly shot the woman once more, and she played dead for the remainder of the attack. In all, the woman was shot five times in her back, buttocks, left thigh, and right breast, but ultimately she survived her injuries. Bite Down then turned his attention toward the family's 29-year-old friend who tried to hide in a bathroom. The woman was shot in her neck, back, and leg, but she also survived her injuries. Bite Down left alone his five-month-old daughter and the other children in the house. He then fled and was arrested following a routine traffic stop. While being pulled over, Bite Down tried to run away. Since officers believed that he was armed, they chased him and used a taser on him. Bite Down was charged with first degree murder, attempted first degree murder, resisting police, obstructing identification, possession of marijuana, reckless conduct, abrogated battery by discharging a firearm, and intentional homicide of an unborn child. If convicted, he could face life in prison. There are some gangsters that live by a code. They abide by the rule of never going after women or children or anyone innocent. If they can't get their specific target, then they're not going to get anyone. Well, unfortunately, there are also gang members that don't care about any of that. If they can't get their target, then they'll go after anyone associated with their target, no matter who it is. Well, the final subjects of today's video did just that. On November 2nd, 2015, an innocent nine-year-old boy was shot and killed by gang members to send a message to his father. The shooting was the result of a feud between a Chicago gang called BBG slash Terror Dome and another gang called Kill Award. In October of 2015, the brother of a BBG member named Corey Morgan was shot and killed and his mother was also shot during this incident but survived her injuries. It is believed that members of Kill Award were responsible for this shooting. This event led Corey to seek revenge on the innocent family members of his rivals. Corey and his crew turned their attention to a member of Kill Award named Pierre Stokes. They were first plotting to kill Pierre's mother, but they changed their mind and settled on his nine-year-old son named Tyshawn Lee. According to prosecutors, their original plan was to kidnap the child and cut off his fingers and ears. Instead, Prosecutors say a BBG member named Kevin Edwards drove Corey and another BBG member named Dwight Doty to Dawes Park on the city's south side on the afternoon of November 2nd, 2015. While there, Corey and Kevin waited in the SUV while Dwight approached Tyshawn. Dwight struck up a conversation with Tyshawn and played basketball with him. Once he gained the boy's trust, Dwight led Tyshawn to an alley 
where he pulled out a gun and shot him seven times at point blank range. An innocent nine year old boy was killed due to a gang beef that had nothing to do with him. In truly satanic fashion, DeWright felt no remorse for this shooting. During the investigation, police even found a half written rap song that DeWright was working on with lyrics mocking the murder. On the day DeWright first appeared in court for this murder, Tashawn's father, Pierre Stokes, was arrested for opening fire on Corey Morgan's girlfriend and her two nephews, leaving all three of them wounded. This beef resulted in each side targeting each other's loved ones rather than each other. Ultimately, Corey Morgan was sentenced to 65 years in prison for this. Dorit Doty was sentenced to 90 years in prison. And Kevin Edwards got the least jail time because rather than take it to trial, he accepted a plea deal of 25 years. Pierre Stokes was recently sentenced to 12 years in prison. Man, this video just shows you how truly horrible the streets are. There's no morals or ethics involved. By choosing the street life, you are also unknowingly choosing it for your loved ones as well. Let me know what you guys think about this situation in the comment section and please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.